we are doing the grade 12 computer applications technology or cat paper one the practical exam from november 2019 and this is video number four and we're doing some more spreadsheets in excel so here we are about question four and they say we must work in the info worksheet so i've opened up the paper here and i'm going to make sure i'm on the info tab there we go that's great now wrap the column headings in row six so that means wrap so wiki wiki i'm not that type of wrapping mr long so the row six so there's actually a whole lot you can actually just click on the whole row six and we're going to click on that wrap button and there we go that's as easy as it is there we go that's how you have it. so you wrap so i'm a wrapper 4.2 insert a function in e2 to determine the most days in column f that a tourist stayed in agra to visit the taj mahal so e2 so the most days in f column f so e2 so we're going to go to e2 over there the most days in column f so that's so what is the biggest number of days so we're looking at a max function so equals max and we're looking at that range the column f so let's go all the way down to the bottom to make oh this is quite a long spreadsheet oh. so to make my life easier i'm going to remember that the last one's 206 so to save time i can just type in 206 as the last if i want to go from the top to the bottom okay and then close the bracket and then enter there we go so that's 21 to the max days okay so the big tip for these questions is look at the mark allocation two marks so that's one mark for the word max and one work one for the the, the range 4.3 insert a function in e3 to determine the number of tourists who indicated the kind of reaction they had when they saw the Taj Mahal. determine the number who indicated i don't know what that means e3 so e3 in column what column they looked in column j so oh some of them left out whether they indicate so so we want to count all those that have indicated which means we don't want to count those that are not blank so we're looking at text so we count in all the text so that means we're using count a equals count a and it's this cell up until i'm going to change that remember we said 206 206 would be the last one so there we go so ej7 to 206 because we know the last one's 206 so count all those that have got text a counts anything that's not blank like text or numbers count only counts numbers let's look at the next one the gender code for a tourist is stored in column K, two for female, three for male. The amount each tourist spent is in column L. Insert a function E to determine the total amount spent by all female tourists. Now, this is four marks, so there's going to be quite a few things we have to do. So we want to determine the total amount spent by all female tourists. So let's have a look. E4, the total amount spent by all female tourists so this indicates the gender and we're looking at females if you remember we want to determine the females and females are a two okay so we want to look at all the twos and if it's a two we want to add up column l i think it was column l the, the amount that they spent so if it's a two like that we add that if it's oh so we look in here first and if this meets my condition then we sum in all of that so that's a sum if another reason why i know it's a sum if because it's four marks some ifs tend to have three parameters in the word sum if so that's normally a good indicator so over here we're going to say equals sum if now where are we looking first we're looking over here first up until 206 now what are we looking for in this blue column we're looking for the number two remember our criteria we put that criteria in double quotes so we're looking for a two in this column and if it is a two then your sum must be column l and i'm going to make that l7 to 206 so in the green column 206 was long there we go 206 there we go so that red column there so if if the blue column has a two go look at the red column and go add that value there we go and that should be working okay 4.5 oh five marks so this is going to be even bigger than a sum if e5 determine how many tourists from spain indicated that they would return to visit the taj mahal so we want tourists from spain that said they would return so we're looking at column d and m and we want to determine how many so we count in if they're from spain but also if they oh so this we, we count in multiple conditions that's why it's five marks because it's a count if we want to count them but we want to see that it's from Spain and that they would return to the Taj Mahal. 
So we're looking at column D and M in E5. Okay, so look. So D, if they're from Spain, and F, if they would return. How do we know if they would return? M, sorry. M is if they would return. So let's go look. M, ah, return. That's a yes. So if they would return, that's a yes. And that must be Spain. So we're going to do a count if equals count ifs because there are lots of criteria first of all what is my criteria range so we first want to look at this group here so up until 206 and what is my criteria for this blue column we want looking for the word spain okay and then we're looking at column m that red column up until 206 and what must be in the red column in double quotes Yes, remember your sum if and your count if and count ifs, your criteria must be in double quotes. So look in the blue column for Spain, look in the M column for yes, or the red column for yes. If both of those are true, then count it. There we go. Apparently there are three of them. Okay, 4.6. Use the hour. Oh, they even told me what function to use. The hour function in E7 to display the number of hours between the time tourists checked in. H and G. So H and G is what we're looking at. So R7, R7 and G. G and H, the time between. So we're going to look at this column, the H column minus that column. So if I just minus two times, it would give me a zero value. But what happens if I put an hour between that? I wonder if that would work. Was there three hours? Yeah, it looks like there three hours. You could also done equals hour of this block minus the hour of this block hour just fetches the hour value of those particular fields so that will give us the same result that could also work as well okay i think we did that yeah two marks easy boom 4.7 the results of a survey showed that tourists spend different amounts per person depending on the gender and the country of origin the lookup table in the countries worked oh so we're dealing with a v lookup or a, a h lookup lookup table indicates the estimated amount of male and female tourists for the various countries per day Insert a formula in L7 to calculate the total estimated amount spent by a tourist for that particular person for the number of days, column F style NG. So, you, oh, they even tell us use a V lookup. So they don't even give me a chance to think about this. So V lookup, determine the estimated amount that the male or female spent. The gender code for the tourist is two for female, three for male. The formula must work if it's copied down to other cells. So we might have to use, whenever you use a V lookup or H lookup, you normally use, have to use absolute cell referencing. So this is a lot of text taken. So let's first look, cell L7. Let's first go to L7, L7. So there's where we are. We want for this person. What do we want to do? We want to look up to calculate the number, the total estimated amount spent by the tourist for the number of days he stayed. So we need to look at the countries worksheet. The countries worksheet. So there we've got the countries and depending. Oh, that's why ah, that's sneaky. So if the person is a male, that works, that works out quite nicely. You'll see if it's a female, do you see it's a two and the data for the females is in the second column. And if it's a male, it's column three, which means it's in the third column. So this code tells me which column to look at over here. That's sneaky. So we are going to do a V lookup and we're looking up the country and we're going to then go look up. Okay. If it's a male and that's going to tell me that gender code is going to tell me to look up in column two or three. Ah, that's sneaky. So that's, that's very well laid out. So we're going to go equals a V lookup. And I know it's a V lookup because they told me, but also because the uh, data follows vertically. It goes up and down. So we're looking for that value, this, the country, comma, where are we looking for it? We're looking for it in the countries and we're looking for it in this block. I'm not going to include the headings. I'm just going to start there and select everything all the way to the bottom. There we go, comma, boom. Now this is the tricky part because I'm going to go back to info and it's going to change my data over here, which is going to be a bit annoying. So now we want to go to info and we want to get the gender block. So not that block, that block there. I actually don't even need to put in the word info. I can just take it out completely. And that's going to tell me if it's a match or not. Now, I can put 
the third the fourth parameter is true if it's an exact match or approximate match um that's normally just dependent if the data is in alphabetical order if i remember correctly it was in alphabetical order so i can actually leave it out if I, I don't actually need to include it so i can do that okay so just let's remember what i did so there it tells me what that's how much a new zealand male is that amount that's the average amount spent per day ah but we want to find if they how many days they spend here that's the number of days. So we're going to take that amount and we're going to multiply it by the number of days that they stayed. That's why that number looks a little bit better now compared to the others. Okay, I think that is correct. And if I test, if I copy it down, we should get the same results. Okay, so we do get similar results. Ah, oh, but ooh, that's messing up my table. Remember, we need to put absolute cell referencing around here. So F4 around there. And I'm going to place F4 around there so that when we copy it down, that it always uses the same table. So if I copy it down, we get the same results and then we know it's working. So just to recap what we did there, we said equals V lookup. I'll show you the little tricks that I did. Oh, I'm spinning terribly. Lookup. I wanted to look up this block and then I put a comma, go to countries, I select the countries, do not include the headings, go all the way down all the way down and then I'm going to press F4 now to put the dollars around it and then I'm going to deliberately click here and press comma so that when I move to the next sheet it doesn't change the country's word to info so I click on info you see it's that must remain countries and not change the info and I actually don't need the word info because um the if you look up is on the info so I can just go for that block there so I can take that away and that, because it's alphabetical, I don't need to put it uh, a true. But if it wasn't, like that second parameter, if it was an exact match, so if it was in alphabetical order, then I would need to do a false. But we can do approximate because it's alphabetically sorted. And then we're going to multiply. That's for one day. We want to multiply by the number of days to get the value. Okay, that's just a recap of that. Okay, well, that was challenging. Five marks, no wonder. Okay, and then last question for this one. 4.8, tourists in Taj Mahal need to get permission to visit the site three months before their arrival. The date that the tourist arrives appears in column E. Modify the function in N7 to calculate the date on which the tourist obtained permission. So the tourist needs to get permission at, to visit three months before the arrival date. So it's three months before the column E date. So in N7, so let's go across to N7. There we go. N7, it's three months before the arrival date. Before the arrival date. So there we go. That's the arrival date. Okay, so that's the arrival date. Okay, so this is getting the year of that particular date. Okay, and then we want to minus three months before. So I wonder if it'll work if we take that and we say the month of that particular date and we minus three from the month and then the day because the date needs a year month day and then this will be the day value of that particular cell so to get three months before we want the same here we want the same day but we want the month minus three now let's see what happens when it's a one because it's three three months before the one would be two months into 2017 so let's go ah oh, there we go it does work it went back to yeah so that i think that does work so you can take so we use a date function to write, rewrite a new date we get the year for that date and we get the day for that date but the month must be the exact same month but we minus three from that value to get that particular value that seems to be working let's try it with that 11 minus three should be the eighth. There we go. That looks like it keeps the day, keeps the year perfect. Okay. And the next one also should go back to 2017. There we go. Looks like it's working. Okay. I think that's all of them. There we go. That's question four. That's all the Excel for this exam paper. Do us a favor by clicking on that subscribe button. Leave a like, leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. And look at our playlist for maybe some more information on Excel or Access or Word or even HTML. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.